Welcome to Pet Sitter Confessional. Today, we're brought to you by Time to Pet and Pet Perennials. What does leadership look like for you? Is it leading a team of sitters in your company? Maybe it's being a leader in the business world in your local community, or being a leader in the dog walking and pet sitting industry. Or is it leadership of yourself and sticking to your commitments and staying true to who you are? Today, we are super excited to have Ruby Ballesteros, owner of Ruby Red's Pet Sitting, to talk about leadership as a business owner, embracing that as part of who we are and living that out in everything that we do. Let's get started. Hi, good morning. Thank you so much for having me. First of all, um, I am, first of all, well done on my last name. Yay. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) So I always tell folks, if you are a um, golf aficionado, it's the same as Seve Ballesteros, who is a famous Spanish golfer. So those golf folks, ah, yeah. Ah, okay. No. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's like no relation that I'm aware of, but it's pretty much the same. Seve Ballesteros, Ruby Ballesteros. But thank <laughs> you for that. Um, my name is Ruby Ballesteros. Um, I can also go by Ruby Red. Um, I am the owner of Ruby Red's Pet Care, servicing the Irmo, Valentine, Chapin areas of South Carolina. And I am really excited um, to talk to you, Colin, about all things pet care and, as you mentioned, why it's so important to um, be a professional in your in your in your business. So, um, what else can I what else can I answer for you? <laughs> well, so I get, we're we're talking about names here. Um, Ruby Reds. Um, how where did the name come from from your company? Well, you know, um, when I first started the business, I was, I had like pages and pages of like cute puns and whatnot. And, um, you know, I had Ruby Red as the beginning and it just kind of stuck. And for whatever reason, people seem to love it. So they're like, oh, I really like Ruby Red. Oh, I really like Ruby Red. So I'm like, well, then I'm just going to stick with Ruby Red. <laughs> so, you know, I was like, survey says Ruby Red. So I just ended up sticking with Ruby Red. And um, I think it kind of um, differentiates myself, um, you know, from other, you know, cute. I love the other names. Don't get me wrong. I think they're so creative and punny and I love puns. Um, but I think it kind of, I stick out like a sore thumb and that's kind of what I want in my business. So. Uh-huh. <laughs> In, in a good way, or at least be memorable. In a good right? way, right? Yeah, yeah we, we we get that too with 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 ours, and and it's one of those things of like, like if you're trying to come up with a name for your business, like don't like don't spend years and years trying to come up with the perfect name. At some point, you kind of do have to go with it, so you can make it mean what you want it to mean, but you can have it be be unique, and and I think that's that is definitely something to to strive for. Absolutely. And it just kind of molded into a branding. So, you know, even with my sign off, I say Ruby Red. When I introduce myself, I say Ruby Red. So and it just, you know, it's just like marketing. The more you hear it, the more it sticks to people's mind. And then all of a sudden it's like Ruby Red, Ruby Ruby Red, Ruby Red's pet care. So (laughs) it seemed to work out. So um, (laughs) I was pretty lucky in that respect. So, so you said that you had pages and pages of of notes and stuff. I guess w- w- was that how did you get started in your business? Uh, you know, <laughs> how can I make a long story short? Um, <laughs> I've got time, I act- <laughs> right? <laughs> Um, I actually entered the pet care industry by accident. Um, I have a pretty heavy corporate background of twenty plus years. And it was mainly in the medical transportation field, um, but somewhere down the line, I had decided to take a different different path in my corporate career. But life had different plans. Um, I, while I was struggling to find uh, employment, um, I had found an ad about dog walking, and I was like, "Well, this is interesting. Is this even real?" So I signed up, and I started walking dogs, and fell in love with it. Um, and of course, my little corporate brain just can't help itself. I start thinking about the different things of what I can do to enhance the experience beyond just walking a dog and then leaving them back at the house. Mm. So um, I decided that I would give myself six months, and if I still was in love with the biting, the scratching, the getting poop on and furred on and everything else that involves pet care. If I still loved it after six months that I would start my own business. And here we are. Yeah. So, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the only regret I have is that I wish I had started sooner. 
but oh. you know, life is the way, you know, it plans out. And, um, and I'm grateful that I had an opportunity to start where I'm at because from all the life experiences that I've had really, um, brought me to where I am now and have the ability to start and run a business, a fantastic business, um, the way that I want. So that's kind of how it started. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, and I and I was and I've, I've read a little bit I, I, about you, about you and I know you talk about it in other places too about how you've you know p- pets have been part of your life for for quite a long time and even your yes. your grand your grandparents had a had a pretty imp- impactful uh, part of that as well. Yes, um, I have always had a connection with animals. Um, I think it's just innate. I can't really explain it. I think any pet lover can you know can attest to that. That it's just an innate natural thing that someone has with animals. Um, my grandparents, um, have, or had rather a small ranch in South Texas. Um, I was born and raised in Houston. So I have that, I, I cost, I tell people I have that big city farm life. Um, <laughs> so I had the best of both worlds. I grew up in Houston, which is a ginormous city. And then down in the summer times, we went to go see grandma and grandpa and the ranch. Um, but I tell people the whole, uh, grandma spoils me does not exist in my family. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> we were there to work. work. <laughs> <laughs> we had to work, which for me, being on their ranch was a lot of fun. So, yeah. you know, I got to tend to, you know, the chickens and the goats and the and the pigs and the cows. So um, and while we had to work after chores, it was fun time for me. So, you know, after we were able to, like, make sure that all the animals were attended to, I as a kid, I would go in that chicken coop and pretend I was the queen of the chickens. <laughs> Why I had a broken broom, and I that was my staff, and I was the queen of the chickens. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I didn't care if I had chicken poop or anything on me. I was just not afraid. I just felt like they were my friends, and you know that carried on with me. You know, even even today, that you know, I I just. I just absolutely love animals and that's just how I've always been. So why I never really thought about that, you know, well, I take that back as a kid, I've always wanted to be a veterinarian and I don't know, life just happened and it kind of, you know, I went on a different path. Um, but, um, I think life said, no, you're not going to be a veterinarian. You're going to be a pet sitter at some point down in life. <laughs> yeah. You know, better, Here I am. <laughs> better late than never. You know, that's what they right, say. Right, right, right. <laughs> I wasn't ready yet. I wasn't ready yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that lesson that lesson from grandma of like, no, there's work first and then we can have downtime. Like, what a great lesson to have, especially when you're running your own business where you go, yes. no, I've I got to work. There's work to be done. Now we're going to set that. Yeah, we can be queen of the chickens later. But right now right. we've got to focus on the work in front of us. That's exactly right. And I, funny enough, but I actually um, instill those disciplines even in my business when I go into a client's house. It's work for first. We got to do chores. We got to make sure everything's clean, watered, pooped, peeped, and everything else. And then we'll do belly rubs. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And then we do belly rubs. Yeah. So <laughs> same concept. <laughs> it, 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 well, and it's so interesting whenever you, I, I know you have a, a team that works for you as well. And I know when yes. we're hiring and like we start shadowing with people, you do get that sense of, of okay, what are what's their first instinct? Is their first instinct to to drop down and lay down and cuddle with the dog and take care of them? Not that that's not important, but right. we've got other stuff to do and redirecting yes. back to that. And that's that shift is hard for a lot of people of going. No, it's we're not just going to lay down and and cuddle with the dogs in a field of daisies. We've got to go do. We've got to go pick up the poop first, and then right. we can go do that. And then we can and then we can snuggle. <laughs> 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 Absolutely. <laughs> Well, and I, I also know Ruby that you have a, a background in in the military. I know you're you're a proud military owned owned business, and yes. and um and I was curious, kind of where or, or how that influences the way you run your business, and kind of any lessons that you have from that. Um. Yeah. I um, I joined the service at a very very young age. I was like um barely twenty. Um and. The military had a huge hand in shaping me into the woman that I am today. Um, I was in the army and they have um, seven core values. Um, and the acronym is leadership. Um, and that stands for loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and um, those values are have been instilled in me since the military, and they still are even today. And I implement each of those core values in my daily life and in my business because I believe in them. And um, you know, and, and I mean, if you if you read along what it is, you know, loyalty, loyalty to my clients, duty. I have a duty to care for their. Um, for their pets, respect. I have to respect, you know, their livelihoods and how they care for their pets and 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 respect my relationship with my clients. Selfless services, going beyond just, you know, the dog walk and, and offering those selfless services to my clients. That's what kind of builds the relationship, you know, between, you know, me and my clients and their pets, um, you know, and so on. Um, so, you know, those, you know, mil- the military experience really taught me the importance of structure and discipline. Um, and, you know, without it, I don't think that I would be able to um, do the things that I do in my daily life or to run the business that I, how I run my business today. So it really has made a huge impact um, in my life. And I was very, very, and I still am proud to serve. So yeah, what I hear, what I what I hear in that Ruby is this um cuz this is where a lot of people struggle is in the okay the individual tasks might not be hard or the, the middle, individual administrative tasks are hard but it's the execution of them perfectly every day right like it's going out and and conducting these visits doing these tasks and having the I you know that 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 discipline that you said to do that and um and when we think about a lot of that where this where the heart comes in for our business is that kind of in the middle of that word there of leadership is the service, right? We are serving other people. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of, that's a lot of the foundations that we, that we build on in, in the, what we do for our clients and their pets. Absolutely. I agree. I mean, it's, it's, you know, I'm a service provider by nature, um, you know, and, you know, I've, I've always enjoyed helping others and trying to figure it, figure out a way of how to enhance that experience. Um, so, you know, a lot of what I've, you know, experienced in life really, you know, brought me where I am today on how, how I can better service my clients. I'm, if I can understand what they have going on in their lives, not that I need to know the details, but how can I alleviate just a small piece of their life and make it better? And as you know, a, a big piece of their life is their pets and a simple walk is great, but what can I do beyond that? To, to make them feel they come home and they're like, oh, I don't have to worry about anything else. Fluffy's good to go. Ruby's great. I need her again tomorrow. <laughs> That's the goal, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, it is because then because then we become invaluable to them. We can yes. help them live their life that they want to lead because that's where a lot of people, a lot of clients struggle with. Well, I have to work or I need to go away or gosh, I need this vacation for my mental health, but I, I can't because of my pet or I, I worry about this or worry about why. And so yes. to hear you talk, talk about how you approach that of going, okay, well, what I do is more than a dog walk. It's more than just a potty let out. Like there's so much more that I can do, not just for the pet, but for the owner as well, mm-hmm. that I can, I can improve their quality of life even when they're not in the home. Absolutely. Yes. And that's, you know, that's what we're in the business for is, you know, you know, work first and then we snuggle. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not with the client, but the pits. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's a different type of service. <laughs> yeah. Not not this one. So, you, so what, what kind of services are you currently offering, Ruby? So right now, um, I... Serve. I offer um, your dog walks, your pet sitting services, and pet transportation. Those are my main three um, type services. But coming in January, um, I am expanding a little bit um, on some of those services where um, I've gotten a lot of uh, kitties in my pack, and um, I have a thing about litter boxes. Oh. <laughs> I okay. clean the poop out of litter boxes. L- so um, literally. And- <laughs> I mean, I go beyond the scooping. I, it's yeah. ridiculous. Um, and um, I decided to kind of start a litter box service where, you know, I used to have cats and I hate cleaning the litter box. And I know that's not a fun job to do for my clients. So going back to servicing the clients and alleviating some of that stress, I want to offer a, you know, a weekly type litter box service where we come in and they don't have to worry about a stinky litter box. You know what I mean? So that's something that I kind of want to implement um, and 
offered to my clients. So um, those are the kind those are the basic services, you know, that I offer. And of course, you know, whatever the client needs, depending on their lifestyle, you know, we always discuss it during our meet and greets. And, you know, we go beyond, we go beyond, you know, just the basic service. Now, the litter box, is that something where you just, you were seeing consistently with your clients that their litter box were in such poor condition? Or mm-hmm. were people actually asking you for this? Um, a little bit of both, actually. Um, there are some, you know, my clients are busy individuals. They have, they work long hours and I respect that and I understand that. So, and being a former cat mom, I understand the stress of cleaning a litter box. So I never judge whenever I come in, it's like, holy guacamole, (laughs) what is going on with this litter box? (laughs) So I just get to work and, you know, and when my clients see, oh my God, this thing is shiny. Um, and there's not even one little dust print anywhere around it, you know, that makes them feel good. Um, and you know, it only happens when I'm there. So I want, or when they, when they hire me, if they're going on vacation or whatnot. So I want to kind of go beyond that and saying, Hey, you don't have to hire me just when you're on vacation. Actually, I can actually offer the service whenever you need to, mm. um, and keep that litter box fresh and it doesn't smell like, Oh Yeah. <laughs> here but um but you know hey life happens and we're busy and i get it but that's why we're here is to kind of help you know alleviate those stresses so um but yeah i did see that a lot and you know and sometimes it takes me a little bit of time to just kind of get it to how what i feel is the standard uh, of a clean litter box um, and some of them are like, oh, this is nice. This is nice. Can you do that again? Absolutely. I can. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When they go, oh, it, it hasn't looked like that since I brought it home from the store. And you go, yeah. <laughs> I was like, did you buy a new box? No, nope, I just cleaned it. <laughs> just cleaned it. Okay. But you know, that, that is where we can find those pain points. And I like how you linked it back to, to who your client is. Busy individuals, busy professionals. What what pain points do they have? Because it's a lot more than just because we we tend to think of like oh emotionally they're going to miss their pet or emotionally like we tend to go to the emotion side of stuff a lot of times right. and going no there are just like there are boots on the ground like physical things in their life that I can help with. There's 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 pain points that are right in front of them that I can help alleviate more yes. than just giving them peace of mind. Like, no, this is a task that they can't do or 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 just don't have the time to do that I right. can take over. No, absolutely. It's all about, you know, um that client experience, enhancing that enhancing that client experience. Um I'd like to share an example. Um I had a, during the heat advisories over the summer, I don't know if you guys got those heat advisories over in your neck of the woods, but we definitely did in South Carolina. We had to cut walks because it was just excruciating. And, you know, um, just because we cut walks doesn't mean we can't do something for the client um, while, you know, we're indoors. So, you know, while we're out pottying and taking breaks inside, you know, I noticed that my client's bedroom, which is kind of the primary area where the pets are, um, the bed was unmade. So during the time of heat advisories, um, I would spruce up her bedroom and make her bed. I have a thing about making beds, too. That's probably <laughs> military related, but I have a thing about making beds. <laughs> yeah. <I see. laughs> you know, that right angle with the sheet. So, so I would make her bed, I would make her bed, I would fluff her pillows, and lay out her blankets. And then the dogs would go out and potty, we come back in, I mop a little bit where the pot, you know, the kid, the kids would, you know, have accidents. And then she'd come home and oh, my God, her bed is made. Hmm. So, you know, what, what a relief. I have a cleaning service that comes into my house. And oh, my God, what a relief it is to come home. And it smells like fabuloso. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I mean, that's how I want my clients to feel. Yeah. Is they come home and they're like, oh my God, this is great. So so that's what I mean by, you know, enhancing that client experiencing, you know, going beyond, you know, that dog walk and, you know, going beyond that belly rope. And then we can snuggle. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it is, it's, and, and I'm sure there's a lot of also like, you know, again, like you said, the, the, we have to meet the, the pet's needs and then we find out what other places can we fill in the gaps. And especially right. if we are cutting walks because it is so hot, well, that means that we're also not going to have a lot of time for intensive outside play either because right. it's too hot for that as well. So how can we make sure we're meeting some needs here while also making this time valuable for the client so they see exactly what they're getting at the end right. of it? 
you know, and in, in these kinds of, you know, services, it re- I, in my mind, I feel like that really builds a stronger relationship with my clients. Because at some point, I start becoming mom, uh, mom number two for their pets. Mm. And, you know, they don't even have to think twice about me coming in there. They know that their pets and their house is going to be well cared for because of the relationship that I have with my clients. Have you heard of Time to Pet? Dan from NYC Pooch has this to say. Time to Bet has been a total game changer for us. It helped us streamline many aspects of our operation, from scheduling and communication to billing and customer management. Uh, We actually tested other pet sitting softwares in the past, but these other solutions were clunky and riddled with problems. Everything in Time to Pet has been so well thought out. It's intuitive, feature rich, and it's always improving. If you're looking for new pet sitting software, give Time to Pet a try. Listeners of our show save 50% off your first three months by visiting timetopet.com slash confessional. A lot of us go, yeah, I will love your pet like you love them, right? But what is, what is, and I think we really need to think about what does that mean? Okay, what, take that to its logical conclusions and where, where is that going to lead to? What are you willing to do if that's true to you? If that's a value that you have as a company, where, what, what tasks, what things, how are you going to interact? How are you going to message? All of that needs to be considered when we, when we approach it with that mindset. No, absolutely. And, you know, sometimes I like to claim they love me more, but. <laughs> oh, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Careful, I think Ruby. I have some, Careful. right? I have some that if I walk, if I drive up and open the car door, they have no questions about going in my car. <laughs> <laughs> But it goes to show that, you know, I have a bond with their pets and, you know, that their pets, you know, trust me, you know, as a human that I'm going to take care of them. And that's also important. And when the clients see that, you know, it's what a huge relief, you know, for the clients and that they're not having to worry about looking at the ring camera every five seconds to make sure that their pets are getting well cared for. Yeah, that that inherent trust starts developing. And I know it it can be that can be a slow build for a lot of clients though. So, how do you I mean, do you do you encounter those clients who are kind of standoffish or not not trusting at first? Oh, absolutely. And and I and I completely understand because I, you know, was that, you know, very worried <laughs> mom. <laughs> so, where I'm like, no, 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 with my yeah. with my own baby. Um and because I have that understanding, you know, I, you know, use methods to ensure, you know, communication methods to ensure that they are staying in the loop about what's going on with their pets. Um, it's always scary when there's like silence, like what's going on? What's yeah. happening? Is my pet okay? Yeah. Um, so, you know, whenever I have a first client, I communicate with them. Hey, I'm here. You know, hey, we're doing good. We'll send a couple pictures to kind of, you know, get them accustomed to the processes and 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 learning what, you know, meeting their expectations and what they should expect when we come in to service their pets. And then at the end of the visit, you know, they get a a fun report card of what happened during the visit. So with, you know, tons of pictures and maybe videos. Um, So that kind of, you know, gives them like, okay, this is what's going on. All right. This is what I should be expecting. All right. This, this is kind of cool. I like this. Hire her again. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the ultimate goal. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Repeat clients. They're they're wonderful. But you're right, you're, right. We've had those clients where we show up and you know, we we they get an alert that we've arrived and then they start texting. How's it going? What's going on? Is everything okay? How are they like how it's like, oh, okay, okay, okay. I need to I might not be able to communicate that level for every client because i know we we send our updates at the very end of the visit of Uh hey you know this is what's going on but for some of those clients who are a little more concerned or worried rightfully so we will give them kind of a a, a progressive update of you know fido's doing great or or baxter's really warming up to me i'll send you a full report here in just a minute Mm -hmm. but it's that it's that communication of things are coming things are happening you know we're we're in this together kind of thing yeah, I, yeah. Communication is is such a simple concept, but it's so important um, in in our business is is that communication because you don't. I always feel like never leave your client wondering or asking questions. Mm. Um, so, and that's kind of you know when we got and I've even you know told my my pack leaders is you know whenever you're doing your report card, make sure that there is no room left for questions. Yeah. And it could be as simple as you know um, you know did you give you know, my pet, the medication, put it in the report card. I gave them medication, no problems. We were good. You know, so, um, you know, it's, it's that simple stuff like that can go such a long way. 
Yeah. Well, and it's interesting you mentioned the medication because that's one that comes up with us quite a bit of sometimes they they have, you know, their medication regime is is pretty complicated. And so they may take certain medications in the morning, which are different than the afternoon, which are different than the evening. And there's complicated labeling and all this stuff. And it doesn't take but a couple extra seconds to to instead of saying, oh, I gave meds to I gave XYZ meds. And I mm-hmm. gave like be, being explicit with them, because, right. especially if it's a client that is particularly concerned about them getting their medications. No, yeah, absolutely. I, I have some babies in my pack that have those strict regimens that they have to have it at a certain time. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we make sure that, hey, we've given it to them. This is what we gave them. And we're good. They, they did all right. <laughs> <laughs> Ruby, a, a little while ago, you had posted um, some brand photos that you had done, and I can't say how much uh, how, enough how much I love the photos that you that you did with these. And when when Megan and I saw them, we immediately went like, "That's it! Like that's I mean, she she nailed this as far as the imaging of this and the the photos that you did." I I, I do want to have you explain kind of like. What the concept of these photos, kind of why you wanted to do these, and what you're trying to communicate to other people? You know, when I first entered this industry, something that I learned very quickly on is how people view this industry. And, you know, whenever I would get introduced, or if I introduced myself, um, the, you know, the first thing they would say is, oh, you walk dogs. Oh, you're a pet sitter. Which is true when I'm in the field, but in my mind, first and foremost, I'm a business owner and I felt like, okay, you know, when I'm out in the field, I'm in my, you know, I'm in my active gear, (laughs) I'm in my yoga pants covered in fur, looking crazy, right? That's how most of us look when we're out in the field. (laughs) So it doesn't exactly, it doesn't exactly offer a professional look. So what I decided to do is whenever I go out and network and market is to demonstrate that I am a serious business owner um, because that's what I am first and foremost. I'm only a pet sitter when I'm in the field doing the duties of a pet sitter. Um, And so that's when I decided that I really need to change the mindset of folks to see me as a serious business owner. And this is the services that I offer that if I, if they take me as a serious business owner, then they know that I take my services seriously and I'm going to take them seriously. So, um, so that's when I decided, you know, I should really, you know, focus my branding into a professional look and being, you know, coming from a professional background, you know, it's kind of standard of having a professional photo. Even when you're going to a university at school, you have a professional photo for your school ID. It's not a selfie in a car. Uh. Uh, <laughs> your LinkedIn profile should be professional, not a selfie in a car. Uh-huh. Um, so that's kind of where, you know, the, you know, professional headshots came from is, you know, I, you know, met a amazing artist, photographer, and we kind of got together and I knew exactly what kind of image I wanted for my business and we got to work. And I think the results were absolutely amazing. So, um, and that has helped. It has helped to change the mindset of like, okay, this is Ruby, the business owner, not just the dog walker. Yeah. And I love, you still have, there's still some, the touch of pet sitting in them. I know in a few of them you're holding like, you know, a a, a ball or a fetch toy or things like that. So it still has that aspect of it, but it flips the percentage of what we're trying to do, of what you're trying to do there of going business owner first and foremost, but what am I a business owner of a pet sitting company? And here's that little bit there. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. So, you know, they, and it's, I, I don't know what it is about this industry that, you know, folks view us as, you know, a certain way. And, you know, when I first started, it was like, oh, cute, you, you know, <laughs> you pet dogs. I'm like, no, no. <laughs> yeah, no, you I, I don't, I was kind of triggered by that word cute that you said. I was like, oh, like, <laughs> because, it, <laughs> because that is, that is, the, that is a lot of perception and not necessarily not necessarily our clients, but a lot of other right. business owners in other industries, right? Yes. Like when you go to business networking events, it is kind of the, like the, they pat you on the shoulder and they go, oh, that's oh, cute. So oh, cute. Oh, yeah. How nice. How nice of you anyway. And you're like, <laughs> no, like it's, it is very frustrating. <laughs> yeah, you are absolutely right. And I, and I did in the very beginning run into that a lot when I would go to these conferences and these networking functions and, you know, and it, 
um, I really had to present myself a certain way for them to take me serious as a fellow business owner. Yeah. Um, and when I started doing that, you know, the mindset changed, the conversations changed. So, you know, there was a lot more respect for the industry, if you will. So, um, and I think at some point I kind of made it my own personal mission to <laughs> change that on behalf of my fellow, you know, pet sitting, you know, business owners. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's it's not saying that we're trying to or you're trying to, you know, justify or explain, but really at the end of the day, it's it's education, right? It's it these, the people at these networking events, at these business functions, whatever, they have no idea. No oh. idea. And as you explain and share of like, here's what we tackle, here's what we do, here's how we do it, the people will go, Oh, that's a lot more than I thought. Or like, that's okay. 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 Right. And you get that right. kind of reaction. It's not just grabbing the leash. Got it. <laughs> yeah. I'll never, I'll never forget. There was one time I was at a, a kind of a business networking event and there was a guy who, who was kind of hanging out in the background as I was explaining what we do. And afterwards he came up and he goes, what an operational nightmare. And I was like, I was like, yes, yes, but it's exactly. beautiful. It's beautiful, but yes, exactly. You're like, it's a lot. <laughs> but yeah, I encourage, and I've seen a lot of um, our, you know, colleagues out there with those professional headshots, and it just makes it just brings a tear to my eye when I see that that you know they are taking the time to invest in their business with you know promoting themselves as a serious professional business. Um, so, and I encourage anyone, you know, to do that. And you don't have to hire, you know, uh, a high-end professional photographer, you know, a simple, you know, business suit and a good camera and, you know, good lighting and you're good, you know. So, um, but if you want to go fancy, by all means, go fancy. But, you know, it's it's so important. If it's important to you, I want, you know, let me say, if it's important to you to have that, image uh and part of your branding in your business then you know i highly encourage you know to do that well because you you mentioned like, you you're also going to these networking events these other conferences these things like that why why is that important for you to do as a business owner it, so one is um to kind of you know immerse yourself in your community what's going out there in the community um you know i belong to two different chambers of commerce and you know I have met so many wonderful people um, that are also business owners themselves. And because of that, um, a lot of them have become my mentor and, you know, help me with my own professional uh, growth uh, in me, you know, personally and in my business. Um, of course, as well as marketing your your brand out there as well. No, you know, letting people know that you're out there and you're in business and, you know, you're here also to contribute to your community. So um, for me, I think it's important to, I may be small, but I don't have to be a million dollar company to go out there and contribute to my community. Mm. You know, I'm a part of the small business, you know, small business community. And, you know, as we all know, in the statistics, small businesses, you know, hold a huge percentage in our economic growth in the United States. So I'm a part of that. So what can I do as a business owner to further contribute to my local community. So for me, I think it's, you know, important to get out there and show what Ruby Red's pet care can do beyond the belly rub. So, um, and like I said, you meet so many wonderful people out there and help you with your own professional growth. And it's, I mean, and that's what it is, is kind of supporting each other as a community, even beyond, you know, the pet care industry. Um, so it's, it's been, it's been exciting and it has had a, a huge impact in my, you know, in my business growth. So I'm pretty grateful for it. But it it starts with viewing ourselves as legitimate though, right? To show up to a business networking event. We have to view ourselves as a business, as yes. someone, as someone worthy of being there amongst other business professionals. Yes, absolutely. And I know I'll admit when I first started going to these networks, uh, networking functions, I was very intimidated because you have these, you know, long time, you know, business owners that, you know, make gazillion dollars or these huge corporations, they have, you know, folks representing them. And I, you know, I was very nervous about it. And I had to take a, a moment and say, okay, 
wait a minute, I belong here just as much as anyone else here. I may be, uh, you know, a one person show right now, but, you know, I may be little, but I am fierce. <laughs> <laughs> Taking it from the dodo. Uh, yes. I am, but I am fierce. So, uh, so I went out there with all the confidence and it's just like, you know, when you show, you know, when you show your confidence, people will see it. So I had to change that mindset. If I want people to take me serious as a business owner, then I need to take myself serious. So I went out there, head, head held high. And, you know, here we come. <laughs> Watch out, world, right? Watch out, here she comes. <laughs> but it, it, is, it is very in- intimidating to think. I know when when we started going to some of our local events, it was, oh, well, here's the third generation business over here. And here's the multinational corporation headquartered over here. And here's this banker. And here's this lawyer. And here's this blah, blah. And here I am, right? Yeah. I'm just, but, but those words of I'm but here I am, I'm just a pet sitter start creeping into my head. Right. And it's like, it's no, like, no, I, I have, I love how you said that Ruby. It's like, I have every right to be here just as anybody else. Like I, yes. I'm, I'm here because like, there's also help here, right? There's like, there's help here. There's resources, the networking and sure the marketing and the branding aspects come with that too. But it's like, no, I'm a small business. This is a group for small businesses. Yes. I, I, I should be here. Yes. Let's, you know, let's meet, let's network, let's, you know, exchange ideas. I'm smart, obviously, because how else did I start this business? (laughs) 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 But I want to surround myself with other smart people to help me. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, please get a little closer. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) You're you're right. And that that just that starts with us being able to view ourselves that way. And, And that's that is really hard. I know that is because it's it's just something we do, right? Oh, it's oh, I just do this. I just do that. And we downplay a lot of what we do most of the time because we think it's not that big of a deal. Well, the pro- the thing is is that if you're in this business, you're in this business because you're actually pretty good at it, right? You're serving your clients well. You have skills. You have there is a degree of professionalism, otherwise you wouldn't be here. And when embracing those aspects, those attributes. And the problem is most of us don't see ourselves. We never thought we'd be a business owner, right? Mm-hmm. That's like you know, it's like you you gave yourself 6 months to figure out if it's something that you want to do. A lot of people kind of wake up and they go, "Well, I guess I've been doing this for 5 years. I guess I'll continue or whatever, <laughs> whatever. And we kind of have to figure out kind of those, it's like clothes that don't quite fit of we go, okay, well, I guess this is, yeah, I can make, I can make this work. Right. Yeah. No, you, 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 you gotta, you know, have that confidence in yourself so that others can see it. And, you know, when, it, and it's, you're right, it, it does get very intimidated and you start downplaying it, but if you downplaying it yourself, then so will other people. Yeah. So, and you don't want that, you know, so you're there, you have every right to be there. You are a business owner, you know, you have knowledge to share with others, um, just like others have knowledge to share with you. So, you know, when people see that, you know, Hey, she's a serious business owner and she's a pretty smart cookie, (laughs) you know, they'll see it and they'll respect it and they'll want to do business with you Yeah. because they take you you serious as a business owner. So it's, it's, it's a little tricky playing field, but (laughs) Once you kind of learn how to play, you know, it's, you know, it's all right. You're, and you'll start exuding that confidence. And, and when you exude that confidence, it's, you know, you're, you have like this, you know, sense of pride of like, yeah, I did it. (laughs) Well, and I know many people may be intimidated initially because they don't, we don't have business backgrounds. So, oh, I can't talk about you for results and forecasting things, blah, blah, blah. Like, okay, that's fine. You get to talk about running a dog walking and pet sitting business. Guess what's the most fascinating thing in the world to a a lawyer or a boring banker? A dog walking and pet sitting business. Like people want to hear your story. And the the fact is, is that they're going to want to hear how you run that. Because whether you know it or not, you do a lot of operations. You you are in financing. You are in marketing. You are in all these other aspects. Just that's not just what we call them because it's we're not, you know, because we don't see ourselves that way. But we get we have a lot of fun things to share, and that attracts people to you just initially, right? And that's 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 something to bring in with with confidence. No, absolutely. Everybody, everybody. Um, when I go to these networking functions and they see pet care on the back of my T-shirt, they're like, "Ooh, yeah. <laughs> what do you do?" Tell, 
Is that is that really? <laughs> yeah. do, do you get the? Do you is that really what you do? Is that do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> Can you do that? Yes. Do you have babies? Give them to me. <laughs> yes. Right now. Let's go. <laughs> All right. They'll love me more. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. I know. Yeah, you. I'll become the second mom. No. It's right. Like, right. No. <laughs> <laughs> Our friends at Pet Perennials makes it easy to send a heartfelt condolence gift directly to someone with a broken heart. They have this awesome direct-to-consumer gift model that takes the effort off of us and ensures a thoughtful, personalized sympathy gift reaches our client or employee on our behalf. All packages include a handwritten card, colorful gift wrap, and shipping fees across the U.S. and Canada. They also offer an array of milestone gifts and greeting cards that can be sent to celebrate birthdays, extend get well wishes, and welcome new and rescued pets. Additionally, there are gift choices in case you need to send a sympathy gift in memory of a special human client or celebrate a pregnancy, engagement, or wedding of a pet lover. If you're interested, register for a free business gift perks account to unlock the all-inclusive discounted package prices. The service is used on an as-needed basis, so there are no monthly or annual obligations or minimum purchases. Learn more at petperennials.com, check out their business programs, or register for that free gift perks account by using the link in the show notes. I know, I know, Ruby. You are um, you're very uh, you're very mission focused and mission driven as an individual and as a business. How do you how do you stay on mission as a business owner? Um, and, and I think another aspect of that too is is I know you have your team. So how do you not only how do you personally stay on mission, but how do you make sure your team is on mission with you? You know, I think it goes back to that golden saying about it when you do something you love. You never work a day in your life. Um, and you know, this is something that I absolutely love. I love all my kids in my pack and the, and you know, as well as any other pet sitting business owner knows that these, you know, kids with their variety of personalities and quirks, they just bring so much joy. And you know, what wakes us up in the morning, if we have our, you know, our own personal babies, we wake up to make sure that they're taken care of. I feel the same way about my clients. I've got to go and take care of these kids. Um, and, you know, it, it kind of, you know, it, it has me focused on that. And, and I'm constantly trying to think of ways of like, how we can do it better. What can we do for the client? What's going on in the world today? And how can we adjust to that, you know, with what's going on in the world today? Um, it's just become a part of my life, you know, um, and with the, my, my team, you know, I think it's important when you hire that you hire people that have the same, um, core values that you do or agree with your same core values and standards as you do. Um, and you know, I give my team a lot of autonomy, you know, they're grown people. They, you know, understand the love and care of pets. They only just the only thing they need to learn is the Ruby Red standard. Um, and, you know, when I train them the Ruby Red standard, you know, we're good to go. And, you know, when, you know, it, going back to my corporate life, you know, one of the most important things that you can do for your employees is to be that support. They're they're intelligent people. And, you know, and I think sometimes we forget that they're intelligent people. They're, you know, they're adults. The only thing that they need is that support system, the right tools and training that they need to do a good job. And when you are, you know, have that for them and you leave yourself open to anything that they need, they flourish, mm-hmm. they bloom in their jobs and they want to work. So, you know, going back to like the great resignation <laughs> a few years ago, when people just did not want to work. You know, something that I've learned in my own corporate life is like just the limitations, if you will, of what you have in your corporate life, that eight to five, that one hour lunch, a clock in, a clock out. You have to, you know, sign for your PTO. What a restrictive life, right? Yeah. But when I hired my team, they pick their hours. They work when they want to. I left, I put the ball in their court of how they want to do this. If you want to work for me, this is the standard of how to care for my kids in my pack. But other than that, you are a grown person and you tell me what you need. And it has worked out beautifully. It really has because I respect them as an adult. They respect me as the owner of this business. And they know that anytime that they have any issues, they can call me with ease. 
and let me know that they need help. They know if they have trouble, I'm there. I'm in the car on their way to help them out. Um, and, you know, that, you know, for me to, you know, remember when I was an employee and I had some of those, you know, tough bosses, you know, I don't want to be that person. I want, I want my team to want to work, <laughs> to love what they do. You know what I mean? Yeah. They, I want them to love what they do. I want them to be like, yes, I go get, take care of Fluffy and not have to worry about anything outside of that. They're there to take care of the pets and they love their job. And that's all they got to worry about. I get to worry about all the fun stuff of, you know, an unhappy client or needy clients or whatever that, you know, me as a business owner needs to take care of. I remove all of that from them. They can focus on what they love to do. Hmm. So, um, and, you know, that's kind of what a business owner is all about, you know, removing those obstacles so that your team can do what they're meant to do. So, um, and so far it's worked out pretty good. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it is, you know, (laughs) yeah, cross fingers, I'll cross them for you too. Don't worry. But, what I hear when you're saying of like, I need to hire people who are competent and that's what my screening process is. Then through my training, I point them towards the goal and I let them run towards the goal while I come alongside at periods of times or struggles and help them along the way. And this is a much different mindset than I have to nanny them. I have to hold their hand. I have to babysit them. When you set the standard, what we found as well is nine out of 10 times, maybe seven out of 10 times, the person will step up to the plate. Mm -hmm. If you've done your screening process appropriately and you've got those things in place, people like having, it's, it's, it's it's like people finding people who like challenges, find people in it's, it's across age groups, it's across demographics. It's not, Oh, you have to get this kind of person or this age or whatever. It's none of that. Everybody Mm -hmm. wants to work and feel valued and do valuable work. And yes. what what more valuable work can we can we as a society provide than caring for pets and giving pet parents peace of mind? Right. Now we, now we have to come alongside them and show them how to do that and then step back and let them flourish. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, you know, in my corporate background, I had held a role for a few years as um, HR training manager. So oh. I have that background. Yeah. So- okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, she is smart. Um, I did. I, you know, I, I, you know, I was in a a call center environment and, you know, not only did I hire and and train call center agents for, you know, and this was still in the medical transportation field. um, Something that, you know, I learned along with the call center manager is that hiring people, you know, yes, you have to have, you have to have key um, elements, in order to do a specific job. And in the customer service world, where we learned is people have to have that innate nature of being nice. They don't necessarily have to have customer service, you know, or call center agent experience. Um, And what we found is when we hire people that are outside of that, and then just mold them to the standard, show them the standard, they seem to flourish a lot more than someone who had a background and they're kind of jaded about it. And they bring in bad habits. So we kind of changed the hiring process. I kind of brought in some of those concepts in my own hiring. Yes, you have to have some experience as far or an understanding of how to take care of pets. Um, that is certainly valuable. I don't want to, you know, someone who thinks all you have to do is pick up a leash. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You got to have something, you know, in order to 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 get there. But you know, but for someone, if I know that they have an innate nature for a love of animals and I feel that they, you know, mesh well with my own core values and I can kind of get a sense of people, all I have to do is show them the ruby red standard and give them the proper tools and training and they flourish. And it's worked out pretty good so far. And, you know, so if I'm hiring someone who is pretty jaded from working at a doggy daycare, they may not do so well in my industry because they're already kind of burnt out in that. And they're, they might be looking for something else, but just kind of based on my own experience, if they're kind of jaded out from that, you know, they may not do well over here because they're going to bring in their bad habits. So, so someone that, you know, has that, you know, innate nature and has um, some good experience 
um, you know, it, it, it's different. You know, one is a full time teacher. She also um, her parents run a rescue mm. and she's a country girl. So she has that life experience. She's not jaded from a doggy daycare or from another employer. She's not bringing in bad habits. She's already got that innate. All I got to do is, you know, show her the Ruby Red standard and give her a, you know, space outside of her kids from school. (laughs) The human kids. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. (laughs) And she flourishes. So, you know, so I kind of look at those things. So, you know, and then I offer you know, training that will enhance her, you know, her skill set like CPR and first aid and, you know, all that fun stuff that we need to learn in this industry. So yeah. that's kind of how I've approached my my own hiring and always hire slow and steady. <laughs> yeah, don't rush. I know we've, get, rush we've, we've reached that point so many times where we've been like, well, I don't know, like, I guess we don't have a reason not to hire this person. And that's a terrible mindset to come from when you're like, well, mine as well. Like you just... No, be methodical, be intentional. It's going to be painful, but but if you're not intentional, people start to come in who don't meet those core values, who right. don't have those things. Because you know, as you're talking, I'm like we as the business owner again, going back to this like we are a business owner and what do businesses do? They have the the policies, the procedures. They have the ideal person outlined. And then they have the processes to mold them to that. And just envisioning the, here's the mold, here's a pliable person with all of the attributes that I need. I need to now have a system to make them fit the mold of my standard. And Mm -hmm. that is now one of our responsibilities as a business owner and importantly, as an employer of, Mm -hmm. I, this is what I have to do now. And if I don't, like we see that, so it happens so many times of, this person didn't work out and they don't understand blah, blah, blah. And asking like, do they know the standard? Do you have a training process or are you kind of just throwing people at the wall to see if they're going to stick? Right. Don't throw people at walls. That's no, not, don't not do literally that. at least. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, because it costs, it, it, it's a huge cost when you do that. And when you mm. do go through the pains of hiring slow and steady, it, you know, you're investing in the long term. And, you know, and that's something that we've learned. I've, you know, I've learned in my corporate background is like when you hire slow and steady and you find, you take the time to find those, the right people and mold them the way that you need to and giving them the resources and the support that they need to do a good job. Such a simple thing, training, support. Um, A lot of corporate companies don't, I don't know. Anyways, (laughs) let me not digress. Yeah. But, you know, it's it's just a simple concept. If you offer that, they're going to do such an amazing job and they're going to love what they do. They want to continue to do what they do. And they yeah. start taking ownership of what of their role. And, you know, and it just becomes a beautiful thing. So, um, yeah. and like I said, you invest in the long term. Yeah, you're going to go through some pains right now, but it's going to pay off. Well, so how how do you keep that long term in mind? Because we have a lot of immediate needs, a lot of immediate pains and so how especially when you're bringing people on like are you thinking oh five years down the road seven years down the road with this person because of how i've you know people have lives and people change and we live in such a different world today where in the past you know you had people that would be in an employer for 15 plus years like myself i was with an employer for 15 plus years but i've learned that in today's world Um, that's really not the lifestyle anymore. Mm. You know, people, you know, change, um, change jobs, change industries every two, three years, it seems like. So I have to understand that because that's who, you know, who's in the workforce today. So I have to kind of work around that, around that new mentality. So we don't have that old school mentality. I'm giving away my age now. You know, that old school mentality where you stay with an employer for, you know, 20 plus years or however long. Mm. You've got folks that are, you know, changing employers every two, three years. And that seems to be the norm now. So with that understanding, I have to kind of plan around that, you know, and, you know, and even in the pet care industry is always changing every day. So I have to plan around that. So, you know, thinking long term, yes, you know, we definitely have to do that. But at the same time, as we learn with the pandemic, things happen. Yes. <laughs> it changed everything. So, you know, Innovative. so we just have to kind of 
you know, make those quick adjustments and, you know, and, and plan for that future. So, but I think as long as you keep your people happy and they're, they're keeping you happy at the same time. Yes. We're good. <laughs> well, it's kind of, it is kind of, it is not kind of, it is redefining what that long term is because you're mm-hmm. right. 15, 20 years ago, that's what people did. Like they stayed in a job and that's what they did. And it was, you know, that's how they did. And now that is just so far beyond the norm. And for us to, as business owners, it is frustrating when you're like, okay, so every six months, right? This is what we're doing every six months, every year. Okay. But that's the job market we're in. Now, as a business owner, what do I do? How can I streamline my processes? How can I make it so that it's not such a big headache? Every Because I know when we first started hiring, that was not scalable. I could not mm-hmm. do what I did with the first two or three employees that I'm doing mm-hmm. now as we're bringing people on, as we've grown since then of like... It's just, we, we have to think about how can we change? How can we adapt to the people coming in, make them feel valued, make them see the value in their work, give them that support. And then as a business owner, understand in six months, like they're, they're probably going to move on to something else, but that's just because what people are doing these days. It is. And in something that and you, um, you had me thinking there for a minute when you made a comment um, is... You as a business, oh, scaling, that's what I was like, what was the word? Scaling. Um, You know, you as a business owner have to understand what type of business you want when you're making those plans. Do you want to have, you know, I always tell people everyone, you know, the measure of success, you know, is defined by the, you know, the individual business owner. You know, if your measurement of success is to have a million dollars, then that's what you're going for. If your measurement of success is just to have a comfortable life where you're paying your bills, one or two people, that's a success. You know what I mean? So, you know, so when you're thinking of that, it's like, you know, I've got to hire, got to hire. Well, what kind of business model, you know, what size of a business are you looking to have? What what is your measurement of success? Are you looking to, to reach that million dollar you know, pet sitting business. And if so, then, you know, you definitely have to make those plans. Or are you just, you know, having something that you're comfortable with that you can retire comfortably with, you know, that is a success in itself, then you plan for that. So when you're making those, you know, hiring plans and whatnot, you also want to hire based on what your business plan is for the future and the type of business that you're trying to have. It is It is about looking forward, thinking about that, and just going like, what am I comfortable with? Because you're right. It's not a one-size-fits-all. It's not a, oh, you have to do this. You have to do that. It's a, what do I want? And that's one of the, that's a, a, a beautiful thing that we get to do as business owners is decide what that is for us and then shape and mold everything else to fit that. Yes, absolutely. So I, I think a lot of, I've met some, you know, pet sitting owners that feel like if they don't have 10 employees and not bringing in a million, you know, a year, they're not successful. I'm like, no, no, that's not true. Your measurement of success is your own. You, you create that measurement of success. If your measurement of success is to be a solopreneur, good for you. That is your measurement of success. You can make your goals to meet that. If your measurement of success is to have a million, you know, dollars coming in with, you know, 20 employees, then that's your measurement of success. Good luck meeting that. (laughs) Yeah. So uh, there are some people that do and yay for you. That was your measurement of success. But I don't think that anyone should compare their business model with anyone else. You should really think about the type of business that you want and then make those goals for yourself and your business. And that is your measurement of success. Ruby, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show today. I can't tell you how much I've I've thoroughly enjoyed this and um, help and having you encourage us to take ownership of being a business owner and that it's such a good thing that we can do and bring that professionalism into our business and importantly, take that professionalism back out into the world and encourage other people and share what we do. But I know that there's a whole lot here um, that we didn't get to touch on and there's a whole lot more. So if people are interested in following along, seeing your really cool uh, headshots that you that you got and, and get in touch with you, Ruby, how best can they do that? Um, I am both Facebook and Instagram. Ruby Reds Pet Care is the, uh, the tag. And anyone can, you know, I'm happy for any emails, rubyredspetcare at gmail.com. I'm so thankful for your time today. I really can't tell you how much we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Colin. I appreciate you. Oh, when she's angry, she is keen and shrewd. She was a vixen when she went to school. And though she be but little, she is fierce.
a quote by Helena in Act 3, Scene 2, from William Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream, talking about her friend, Hermia. It really is a great quote that encapsulates the mindset of determination and tenacity, regardless of not just our own physical size, but also our perception of who we are. It's about admiring the qualities of a person, focusing on inner strength and courage. Two foundational principles when it comes to being a leader in no matter what you do, whether that's in your business, in your community, in your industry, or to yourself. So ask yourself, where does my inner strength come from? And what do I need to be more courageous about this year? We want to thank today's sponsors, Time to Pet and Pet Perennials for making today's show possible. And we really want to thank you so much for listening. We hope you have a wonderful rest of your week and we'll be back again soon. Thank <laughs> you.